Brisket is considered the king of barbecue. It is delicious, but it can be intimidating. So if you've never tried it before, or maybe tried and failed, on today's video, I'm gonna show you my super easy method of cooking a delicious brisket. Mmm, so good. Let's get started. As I'm sure you guys can see, it's a little bit different setup for this video. We are cooking this at night. I'm gonna prep this brisket, get it on the smoker. It's gonna cook overnight. I'm gonna go to bed. And by the time I wake up in the morning, it should be ready to go and perfect. When it comes to smoking brisket, there are a ton of different recipes, methods, and videos online. You can talk to 50 different pit masters and get 50 different ways of cooking the perfect brisket, but they can all be a little bit intimidating, maybe challenging, especially if it's your very first time making one. So I wanna show you my easiest way of smoking a delicious brisket right at home. So why is a brisket so challenging? Well, for one, it's a really big piece of meat. It takes a long time to get it done perfectly. There's a lot of connective tissue, a lot of intramuscular fat, and you have to render that all down to get it super tender and delicious. Now, because of that long cook time, you run the risk of overcooking it or drying it out. So a lot of people can be a little bit intimidated or really kind of afraid to try cooking a brisket. But when it's done right, it is absolutely delightful. You get that beefy flavor from the brisket, the smokiness, that crusty bark on the outside. It's tender, juicy, just falls apart in your mouth, and it is just hard to beat. That's why it's considered the king of barbecue. First up, let's talk about picking the right brisket when you go to the store. This is a full packer brisket. I got this thing from Costco. It is a choice grade. And what I like to look for uh, when I'm shopping for a brisket is first, the size. So this is about 13 pounds. And really the ideal weight for a brisket is between 10 and 13, anything under 10, and it's just more likely to overcook and dry out. Anything over 13 is just gonna be more of an uneven cook and will just take way too long. Next, when you flip this over at the store and just look on the bottom side or the meaty side of the brisket, you wanna make sure there's enough and plenty of this intramuscular fat or marbling, as this will ensure the brisket is, uh, is not going to dry out and just stay nice and juicy when it's finished. Here's a dad tip for you. One hour before you trim this, put it in the freezer, it'll firm up and it'll be much easier to handle. Next up, let's trim our brisket. Take your knife and then just gently open up this cryovac. Make sure you don't put any uh, big gashes in the meat. There we go. Now this is a really important part of the process. A uh, good trim can really set you up for success with your brisket. So take your time here, don't rush it. This is a, uh, a really, really important step. After it's out of the packaging, just uh, pat it dry. Again, this makes it easier to work with. Be sure to get both sides here so it's not gonna slide around on you. Before I actually start trimming, let me show you the different parts of the brisket. So this is the uh, meat side or the bottom side, also known as the flat. So this is one big muscle right here on the bottom side. And then if we flip it over, this part here, this kind of left half of the brisket is the point. This is the more fatty uh, side of the brisket. It's got more of that intramuscular fat, more of those connective tissues. And then the two connect right here in the middle. So the point of the trim here is to get this brisket looking more evenly, have it be a little bit more aerodynamic so it will cook at the same time on both of these ends. So first up, inspect your brisket, see if there's any kind of loose or pieces that are sticking out like this. All briskets are going to be a little bit different, so uh, yours might not have this fatty piece. Uh, but if it does, just take your knife and we're gonna start sculpting all this off. On this side of the brisket, we have this big, hard piece of fat. I'm gonna take my knife and I'm just gonna start to slowly shave this off. An important part when trimming the brisket is to just take a little bit at a time and your work your way down. If you take too much, you can't put this back on and you can always cut more afterwards. So take your time here. Again, if you can remember one thing from this video is to don't rush your brisket trim. See, we're slowly shaping it, getting it even with the rest of our brisket. This hard fat will never render down. And we wanna get this down so it's super flat. You can see we've uh, reached the meat here under the fat, so that's as far as you wanna go right there. And there's still this kind of ridge sticking out on this side. So you can put your hand underneath the brisket, lift it up, and then just start to shave this corner here. Again, we wanna get it even and flat. 
anything that sticks out is just gonna burn off or prevent our brisket from cooking evenly. So take your time and get it done right. Still a little bit uneven here, so I'm gonna shave this piece off right here. It's already looking better than it did when I first took it out of the packaging. Look at that, nice and pretty, nice and flat. One thing to point out when you're trimming this down, if uh, the fat feels soft, like it does here, that's pretty much as far as you wanna go. If it's still hard and firm, like it is on this side, that means you can still trim this off. So we'll do just that. Cut right down here and then just sculpt the brisket, go around this edge. There we go, just smooth this out and yep, see that feels much softer than it did before. So we are looking pretty good. Let's clean up this side here, you can see it's all this kind of loose fat right on top. Sometimes they have this, sometimes they don't, but I'm just going to cut all this off because uh, it's just gonna get in the way. There are also a bunch of different ways you can trim a brisket up. Some people like to remove all the fat from the point, which is this side here. I like to leave a little bit of it on, it's just gonna help protect the meat so it doesn't dry out and uh, that bark will still develop on the fat that's on top. So I like to leave that on. But if you like to trim this off or if you want to try it a different way, give it a try and see what you like better. On the end of your brisket, you want to make sure that it's nice and round. You want to sculpt these edges so they're not sharp like they are here. So just take your knife and just kind of go down the brisket and then just turn your blade into it. Again, making it uh, smooth like this and round and really sculpting it will give it that better aerodynamic efficiency in the smoker so again it'll cook evenly and no one part will overcook or cook faster than the other so again just take your time and a lot of this really will come with practice I mean I'm not an expert at trimming brisket I don't cook them all that often but I know enough where they come out great especially for uh, for home use so if you're doing this for the very first time don't feel bad, don't be scared, just give it a try and I'm sure it'll come out delicious. Let's address this uh, brown part here uh, on the side. So that's from the oxidation, from being in the packaging. We're going to cut all that out, so flip your brisket upside down and you can see it goes from this end all the way to the edge right there. So again, just take your knife and we're going to start sculpting and removing all this uh, brown and meat on the side and again just kind of rotating your blade down as you get to the bottom so you get this nice sculpted and rounded side just like that before we get to the rest of that let's address this hard piece of fat right here so this is the decal and this fat goes right through the middle of the brisket and that would connect the flat to the point now again this is the hard fat that's not really going to render down so you want to take your knife and I'm just going to start to gently shave a lot of this off just like we did on the top side and again just sculpting that brisket making sure that it stays flat and round. After you get this section even with the meat here you can see that this part is sticking out so again just take your knife and I'm going to start to sculpt this down as well just go all the way down removing anything that sticks out just like so again the idea here is to get this brisket as even as possible because that will allow it to cook evenly throughout so no one part will overcook and it's uh, just going to be a much better final product my brisket has been out of the freezer now for about an hour and as you can see it's starting to get kind of soft and flimsy you can see it's getting much much harder to trim some of this off than it was before that's why putting it in the freezer for at least an hour just makes this process so much easier the last piece to address on the bottom of the brisket is just this extra fat I'm gonna remove all this down and when you do just pick it up from the bottom here and you can see the grain goes this way and then just trim this 
with the grain. This way you're not gonna make any big cuts in the meat and it's still going to stay nice and flat. See this whole part is now sticking out and that will just burn off from the long cook. So we're gonna cut all this off. Now that our meat side is looking good, it is trimmed up nice and flat. Let's flip our brisket over. And now one of the last pieces to address is this flap right up here. So this is called the Mohawk. And as you can see, it's kind of thin, it sticks out. If I were to leave it just like this, this entire section will just burn off on the grill. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shave this whole thing off. So again, just take your knife and we're gonna cut, cut this guy off. Going a little bit thicker in this cut. And now I'm just gonna take my time and slowly sculpt it again to get it flat and even with the rest of the brisket. The last part to address is the fat cap that goes over the brisket flat. And you can see this really clearly on this end. You can see all this fat, just look how thick this is. This is just way too much. We wanna get this down to about a quarter inch thick, which is exactly what's on this side of the brisket. You can see it right here in the front. You can see the meat, about a quarter inch of, uh, of fat. So that's what I'm gonna do next, is to just start shaving this fat cap down. And you can see exactly where it starts. So we're just gonna go kind of from here all the way down to get this edge to lie nice and flat. Take a little bit at a time. Don't go too deep. You can always uh, take more off later, but you can't put it back on. It's very important to have a sharp knife when trimming your brisket. It just makes the process a whole lot easier. I'm using this fillet knife from Montana Knife Company. It's super sharp and very easy to handle. Now that I've got this side all trimmed up, I can see on this end of the flat just how thin it is. Look, this is super thin here, whereas this has much more meat. So when I put this on a smoker like this, this whole edge, this whole corner, is just going to overcook, burn off, and it's not going to be good. So what you can do, if you have something like this on your brisket, just take your knife and I'm gonna round off this entire corner. And to make it easy, just cut off the edge or the corner and then just take your knife and start shaping it to get it rounded off. See, so now we're gonna have a, a more even layer of meat on this side. And our brisket will come out much better. So now this corner is rounded off. This corner is not, so I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna flip this brisket over just so you guys can see. And we'll give this side the same treatment. I'm just gonna round this off a little bit. The brisket is trimmed up and it's looking pretty good to me. So to kind of quickly go over I'll go what I did here, I removed some of the fat over the flat to get about a quarter inch thick all the way around. We are rounded off and shaped the uh, edges here so it's nice and round cut off the uh, mohawk so this doesn't burn off removed some of the fat from the bottom and really the main thing to keep in mind when trimming a brisket is to just get it looking kind of even on all sides so it lays pretty flat like this one is and i say uh this thing is uh is ready to go Here's another dad tip for you. Save your trimmings. You can use the leftover meat grinders down to make burgers and save the fat. You can render this down to make some tallow. The last part of the prep is to season up the brisket. I'm gonna take some yellow mustard and use this as the binder. This will help the seasoning stick to the meat. Don't worry, you won't be able to taste it. Just rub this all over the brisket. You don't need a whole lot of it, just a nice thin layer. Next, I'm gonna use my all-purpose seasoning. This has salt, pepper, garlic, all those classic barbecue flavors, and I'm gonna season it pretty heavily on all sides. This is a big piece of meat, so don't worry, you can take the seasoning. And finally, I'm gonna finish it off with more coarsely ground black pepper. This is gonna help develop the beautiful bark on the outside. Now, don't worry, it's not gonna be too peppery. The pepper is going to mellow out as this thing is smoking, and it's going to be delicious. For this cook, I'm using my Weber Searwood pellet cooker. It's set for 225 degrees. Now, if you've got a different grill or smoker at home, whether charcoal or offset, it's gonna be a little different recipe if you're gonna be cooking a brisket. Using a pellet smoker is what makes this recipe so easy, simple, and really foolproof. Grill is up to temp. 
So I'm gonna put my brisket on, which by the way is looking really nice. I'm gonna put this guy kind of on the left side of my grill, just like so. And next to my brisket, I'm gonna put a water pan. So this is gonna provide additional moisture in the cook chamber. Because we're cooking this in the fall, temps are lower, there's not enough moisture in the air. Having this foil pan on the grill, we just add that moisture to prevent our brisket from drying out. Now that the brisket is on a smoker, there is really nothing left for me to do. I'm not gonna spritz it, I'm not gonna mess with it, I'm not gonna wrap it. I'm gonna go to sleep and I'll be back tomorrow to check up on it. Deuces! It is the next day, it's about 9 o'clock in the morning. I did check on the brisket a couple hours ago and it was still a little firm and not fully done yet, but it is now. So let me show you exactly what that means. Wow! That is a really nice looking brisket. So first you can see the outside, that bark is uh, nice and sad. You can feel that a layer of fat that we left on top. Look at this, it's just nice and very pillowy soft. Has a, a really good jiggle to it, but more importantly, anytime you cook brisket, you wanna make sure that it's tender. So what that means is you wanna take your uh, thermometer, I'm using this thermopen, and you wanna poke the brisket in a couple different spots and this should go in like a hot knife going into butter. Sort of like that, see? Like there's no, there's no resistance. So that means all that connective tissue, all that fat has rendered out, and our brisket is nice and done. Temperature-wise, you wanna start checking for tenderness at around 200 degrees internal. That's when it's technically supposed to be finished, but sometimes, depending on the cut and the quality of the meat, it can be anywhere between 200 and 210. That's why the tenderness test is really the kind of final way to find out when the brisket is ready. Brisket is done and it is looking and smelling absolutely amazing. Now, before I actually eat this thing, which I really want to, we're gonna have to wrap it and let it rest. That's gonna allow those juices to redistribute. The temperature is gonna come down a little bit. It's just gonna create a much better final product. So I've got this laying on a uh, big sheet of aluminum foil. I'm gonna turn it this way and then you just wanna wrap it nice and tight. Bring over one edge. And then just fold it over. There we go, just crush this down so it's uh, nice and tight, just like that. You've got a couple different options when it comes to resting your brisket. If you're planning on eating this within the next hour or two, put this wrapped brisket into a insulated cooler or into your oven that's turned off. Really anything that will help kind of hold that heat that's inside the brisket. If you're planning on eating this later on in the day, maybe later for dinner or you want to take it somewhere else, put this in your oven and set it on your lowest heat setting to kind of act as a warming box. That'll help retain the heat, keep it nice and warm, and you can hold it like that for 12 hours plus. My plan is to eat this brisket very soon. So I'm gonna drop this in my cooler, let it rest for about an hour, and then it'll be good to carve. It's been an hour, brisket has rested. Let's take it out of the foil and see how we did. This is always the most exciting part. After, uh, after a long cook like this, ooh, wow. I mean, look at that. That is a beautiful brisket. Before I cut into this brisket, there's a couple things you wanna keep in mind. So just like any other steak, you wanna cut this across the grain for maximum tenderness and really the best mouthfeel. And there's two sections to the brisket, right? There's this flat section right here, and then there's the point and the flat on this side. So first I'm gonna start on the flat and we'll cut straight across the brisket because the grain goes in this direction. And then when we get to the halfway point, I'm gonna rotate it and cut it this way to cut it across the grain on the point. So let's just get right into it. I like using a serrated edge knife. When slicing a brisket, it just helps to kind of cut through that bark and I get a nice clean cut all the way through. And for the uh, flat section, you wanna keep your slices about a quarter inch thick, maybe even a little bit less. So we're just gonna go just like this here. There we go. Nice and even. All the way through. 
Yeah, that is looking really good. You can see it's glistening inside. You get this layer of that pillowy fat on top. Let's take a look at this last slice here. Oh yeah, look at that. So you can see this beautiful smoke ring on the bottom. That brisket is glistening. Get this nice even layer of fat right on top. We are almost to the uh, center of the uh, brisket and you can see the separation. So you can see this uh, flat section on the bottom that a uh, fat kept separating it right here on top and then the point muscle is now starting to show up here. So I'm going to cut a few more slices and then I'm going to rotate the brisket to uh, slice the point. So I'll just go a little bit more and with each slice so you can see more of that point showing up right there on top. But this is one juicy, I mean look at this, it's just juice is just coming out of it. I'm telling you guys this method works so well for these briskets especially if it's your first time. You don't have to be intimidated, don't have to be scared. Put this on overnight. I mean that is so nice. Like I can't get enough of that. Uh, but here let me show you this piece real quick before we continue on. So this is a nice slice of the flat. You have the point. You can see the smoke ring all around. Nice even fat cap on top. I mean, this is an absolutely beautiful section of brisket. Right, nice and tender. Holds up on the finger. Look at that. And it just pulls right apart. Here you can see the grain on the uh, point runs in this direction. So that's why once you get to this point of the brisket, you want to turn it and start cutting it across the grain. I'm not going to cut the whole thing because this is uh, a lot of meat and we're probably not going to eat this whole thing right now. So I'm just going to slice it right down the middle so you guys see a cross section of uh, this point and the flat right here. See, look at this. That is juicy. So now the point muscles are cut across the grain. You can see that fat cap running right there in the center and the uh, flat right there on the bottom. So. All right, let's take a uh, bite out of the point. So this is that side section. So I've got the point, I've got the flat. Let's try it out. Mm. It is just so beefy. And then you get that smoky bark on the outside. It's such a delicious combination. That pepper got nice and mild over uh, that overnight cook. So it's not peppery. You still get that kind of peppery taste, but it's not overpowering by any means. And it is just so, so delicious. So if you like the fatty brisket, that's the point. And if you like the more lean, that is the flat. Mm. Both are absolutely delicious. You can serve this sliced, put it on a piece of white bread, serve it with, you know, any side dishes, potatoes, whatever. It's a, uh, it's a really delicious protein. And if you make this brisket and maybe you overcook it or it kind of falls apart on you, you can always chop it up and make it into sandwiches. There's really no wrong way of serving brisket. And uh, even if you overcook it, it's, it's still salvageable. You just chop it up, mix it together, and it's so good. Mm. Oh yeah. If you guys like the simple smoked brisket recipe, be sure to check out my pulled pork and rib videos. Subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time. <laughs> Feels nice. It is absolutely. It just kind of falls apart in your mouth. Oh, fuck. So, wait, what? What was the last one to say? So, what? <laughs>